Revival Recap. I am Seth Dahl here with Pastor Joaquin Evans, and we are going to talk about our weekend, well, our service with Bill Johnson. He was only here, he came in Saturday a couple hours before church, Yep. and then he left Sunday morning. Super short, yeah. He, he got to spend a little bit of time with our team on Sunday morning. Yeah. But yeah, the one service, but hey, it was powerful. If you can cram it all in one, one service, he, that's that's what he did. He put it all in yeah. there. Yeah. So in this episode of Revival Recap, we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna talk through a couple of things that Bill said because he just dropped bomb after bomb like he always does. That's what he does. But before that, he's the father of the movement that we're a part mm-hmm. of that Bethel Austin is yeah. birthed from. Um, we had Danny the week before, who's mm-hmm. also a father, mm-hmm. uh, but Bill is like, the he's father. even Danny's father, so like, <laughs> he's the father of the fathers. He's the godfather. <laughs> he's the godfather of all of us, and I just wanted to get some of your perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously a privilege to have Bill Johnson yeah. come, but he's not just a guest speaker to us. He's at a different level for us yeah. than anywhere else in the world. Um, I, so I just wanted to hear your thoughts, your what you feel like yeah. he deposited, what you feel like um, was given yeah. to our house with that one yeah. service. Yeah, so good, obviously, to have him here. And, you know, we've been in Austin three years. The church, uh, you know, is two years old. Um, but so we've been looking forward to this time for, mm-hmm. you know, all, all of that time. And even as you're saying that about him being the father, such a father, father of the movement, I actually just flashback personal encounter uh, way back in, you know, I, I moved to Bethel in 2003, so it would have been a couple of years before that probably, but um First time ever hearing about Bill Johnson, I heard him speak at this this youth camp, this youth revival thing, and it just he blew it up like Holy Spirit. Is that I remember that? Is that the place where That's, he said Holy Spirit come? Yep. And you went in yep. your heart. You said, "I need that" or "I want that" yep. or that. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit yep. actually responded. to You me. know, which is cool because you and I have both done that camp uh-huh. in yeah. the years since, right? Yeah. Like. I, that's first the time camp I you gave took me the you, microphone yeah. <laughs> for 10 minutes, and that was uh-huh. the first time I ever did anything with Bethel, spoke on behalf of Bethel. Yes. And it was you so good. The they oh. invited you back as the speaker. Yes. Like, so we, so wow, that's like lineage right there. Wow. So I met Bill at that camp. I've done that camp a couple times. You've done that camp. Anyway, uh, but the point is, I saw Bill for the first time ever. This is way back. So he wasn't, no books out, wasn't you know, world famous and um, didn't know who he was walking into the room with him, didn't know who he was. But when he shared it, like, kaboom, yeah. like blew every Everyone's everybody's small. minds, Holy Spirit fell, crazy stuff. So I grabbed some tapes, you know, it wasn't even CDs, grabbed oh some cassette tapes uh, and got home and I'm listening to a cassette tape and I still remember the message of that cassette tape, how to build a revival culture. Wow. It's one of the most profound messages still to this day 20 plus years later that I'm I, I still remember it he's talking about the test pilot yeah. and a rat on board he's eating the fuel line so the test pilot has to decide do I try and land the plane I don't have time or do we so fix he takes it, it, in the, it takes, takes it higher to takes kill it the higher where, the, where there's no oxygen the rat dies so he's talking about revival and uh, you know the the, the solution is Man. to go higher. And the brother snake line, all this stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'm listening to this message, and out of my spirit, I'm just listening to the message. Like, wow, 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 that's amazing. And then all of a sudden, I hear myself say, I don't intend to say, I hear yeah. myself say, that man is my father, or wow. that man is your father. And it just came out of my spirit. I went, whoa, okay. And that kind of started this course of like me going to Reading, getting trained up. So all that to say, that's that was... 21, 22 years ago, uh-huh. and uh, so now we're here planning, you know, doing a Bethel church in Austin, and, and he's here, here he comes, you know, yeah. so I mean, this means so much uh, to me, to Renee, did communion, uh, led communion for us at our wedding, 
but for the house, he is the apostolic father of yeah. this movement that is impacting the world. Yeah. And it has it has incredible players, you know, from all the way down the line, you know, Chris and Danny and on and on down. It's yeah. not it's not a one man show, which is which is the power of the movement yeah. and the apostolic grace yeah. has raised up hundreds and thousands that are doing the stuff, but still it it is birthed out of his his relationship with God and his yeah. apostolic calling and his office. And so everything that we're doing, and I've been saying this for years, even back, you know, just itinerating out of Bethel and all the miracles we're seeing, it's like, you know, and what they teach, that we get to stand on someone else's shoulders. We get someone else's breakthrough essentially for free, yeah. but then we have to pay the price to take breakthrough further. Yeah. But I've said from the beginning, it's like doing what we get to do is like water skiing behind someone else's grace yeah. in the wake of someone else's grace. Yeah. You know, it's from like they're, big old they're and we're yeah. like, we're holding on. Like, so all that, you know, to come and just have the affirmation. Uh, you know, what he spoke, the wisdom, obviously, what he brought, incredible, but to have the affirmation and just the affirmation from the apostolic father of the movement saying, you guys are doing a great job. What's happening here is amazing. Yeah. I love what you're doing. Well done. Go. Keep going. It's just like this bellow of wind just <sighs> behind yeah. our backs, you yeah. know, and you can just you can just feel the tangible increase and even permission for increase in the environment off of that yeah yeah you know it's cool um actually you talked about the first time you heard him speak and the first time i ever got introduced to bill i opened up an email and it recommended the book supernatural power of transform mind mm -hmm. and i was living in new york and i was like i didn't know what why but mm -hmm. my spirit was like buy that book you need that book so i just bought the book right there ordered it 2001 i ordered it and it gets there and that was his second book so he wrote when heaven invades earth yep. this was the second one but it was the first one i read and i i was forever ruined like i read it twice in a row and i said i have to go there yeah. it's kind of like you're like that's totally. my father like totally. i have to go totally. to that place yeah i don't even know who bill is i don't even know the school i don't know and that's where we met because mm -hmm. you were my revival group pastor yeah. that's where you were lauren's revival group pastor we got married mm -hmm. because we both showed up met in there, your yeah. revival group so this thing is one giant circle for our both africa of us. story is the quad, uh, the paraplegia getting up out of the wheelchair yeah, in was, is in that book. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. So that what's awesome to me is like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Lauren and I were talking about stuff, and I said, you know what, we need to read this chapter from Supernatural Power of Transform Mind because mm -hmm. when I read the book, there was one chapter. I mean, the whole book is powerful that he wrote, but there's one part about the gates, mm -hmm. the pearls, the gates, oh, yeah. the praise that is in that book. And literally three weeks ago, I said, Lauren, this this part of this book has probably impacted me more than, well, that and another book that mm -hmm. he wrote, um, Strengthen Yourself in the Lord. But the this book, so we literally pulled it out, and then he shows up and he preaches, preaches on the exact yep, same thing. And here. me and Lauren are like, <laughs> we just read this again. But for me, it's like that's the first encounter with Bill I had yeah. was through that book it wasn't a message it wasn't yeah. face to face it was just this book that really was that's like incredible that's how we build the gates in our life and then he comes and talks about and it and there there was so much wind on it when he spoke it two Saturdays ago here it was like it was fresh bread yeah. fresh revelation even though it's in that book all the way back from 2000 and Four, three, yeah. four, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Somewhere right in there. 15, Maybe 16, five. 17 years ago, whatever. Yeah. And like, but that revelation still, when he shared it, it was like, yeah. like you just feel it was so, so powerful. The the uh, the gates are pearls and and uh, uh, the gates are praise yeah. and uh, and pearls and pearls are formed in irritation. You know, and so yeah. it's like giving praise to God in the midst of irritation and Raps struggles, the, and, tra yeah. and wrapping it in praise, and that forms this gate. It was just for it heaven to crash in. If you didn't hear the message, just go you listen to it because it'd be awesome. Hey, and you need to buy Incredible. that book. It's like, <laughs> yes, all of his books 
or just life to yeah. sons and daughters. That's like that one though is training your mind on the mind of Christ, you know, yeah. thinking from heaven's perspective. Like yeah. I mean when heaven invades earth is like eye opening, like whoa, yeah. like all of God, like wow, yeah. this is available, but training yourself on the thing like God supernatural power to transfer mind. There's yeah. it's incredible. I mean that's everything he talked about. I have all the notes here. But he said, sometimes it's our opinion that keeps us from living in the mind of Christ, not the devil. It's us. It's our own opinion because we're not thinking <laughs> like God does. Yeah. We haven't trained ourselves to think like God. He said, learning how God thinks and functions is the great adventure in life because it's the discovery of Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And it's what ushers in mm -hmm. the reality of the kingdom and proves the will of God. Mm -hmm. Dude. Dude, Bill is a, a spiritual B fifty one bomber. Uh huh. Like, <laughs> like, old mindsets are not safe when he's around because no. they're just gonna get blown up. Like yep. he's, uh, I love it. It's uh, I've been listening to him for twenty years, and never get tired. Yeah. Still, every time he talks, it's like, oh wow, mm -hmm. oh dang, uh -huh. where'd you get that from? Uh -huh. Like. <laughs> It's and like, it's like, you know, rarely is it ever like the same things yeah. over again. Like, you know, he'll repeat, he'll review stuff, but he's all like fresh bread, new That's stuff all I, the time. I've noticed that with him more than anything else, I think, is I've heard you preach this before. I know you've said this a hundred times. You've preached it all over the world, maybe mm -hmm. more than a hundred times. Mm -hmm. You've said this over mm -hmm. and over. But every time you do, mm -hmm. it's like it's the now Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, yeah, it's the fresh bread. It's mm -hmm. now, one thing I've noticed about him, because I've watched him and I've been involved, I was involved with Bethel for so long too. Like, you know, you do this a similar declaration every week in the offering. But with Bill, it's always like it's the first time. Mm -hmm. It's never just going through the motions. It's yeah. never just, this is what we do, so let's just do it. It yeah. always feels like, with his sermons, it's like, that's a 15, 16-year-old message. Mm -hmm. And it feels like it's brand new, or it yeah. feels like it's exactly what we need in the moment, or it feels like it's the first time he's ever preached it, yeah. not something he's pulling out from a long time ago. Yeah, like that's what I think. I've seen him carry more than anyone else probably is. Yeah, is to everything feels like it's. He knows not, how. Yeah, he knows how to freshly engage with that truth for his own edification. Yeah. So he's not regurgitating. He's feasting. Yeah. And it's it's and so because of that, it's freshly torn bread every time. And yeah. the fresh aroma, the fresh like because he doesn't he he purposes in his heart not just to regurgitate, like, oh yeah, that yeah. was I mean, to the point of his renewed mind, him him positioning himself for his renewed mind. So I mentioned he did he did Saturday night and then he did a little time with our team, our uh our staff on Sunday, I asked him this question. I heard a message that he spoke. I, I listened to a podcast not that long ago. But So I asked him about it. So he started resharing it with our staff. He was talking about sitting in a lobby somewhere with a Christian magazine on the table. He picks up the Christian magazine. He's just, you know, burning time, you know, yeah. waiting for whatever. So he's flipping through. He's looking at stuff. You know, it has conference advertisements in there for this conference, that conference, as you're flipping through the pages. And he's going, and he... And he's glancing at the speakers at the different conferences. He's going, eh, man, man. Like, kind of indifferent is the yeah. word he would use. But then he caught himself halfway through the magazine and realized that he was scanning over God's children with indifference. And he, he was cut to the heart, but he had the oh. awareness to, like, so he Catch went you. back to the beginning of the magazine to look at all the speakers. Slowly went through every page and looked at every single speaker by name, whether he knew them or not, until he could feel the love of God for that person. Then he would go to the next speaker, then the next speaker. Then when he was done with that conference, he would turn the page. And he revisited the whole magazine so he could feel the love of God for each and every individual and speaker. Like, like, the intentionality of having the mind of Christ. And that's that... Like, if you do that, if that's how you live your life, yeah. of course, when you revisit a truth, it's going to be freshly torn bread. Yeah. It's yeah. 
And it's what's going to bring heaven to earth. It's mm. what it's what proves the will of God mm -hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's this is why Bill is who he is. Mm -hmm. Bethel is what it is. Mm -hmm. And the impact that he's mm -hmm. had all over the planet, not just on us, but everywhere, yeah. all yeah. over the world, is because of this learning mm -hmm. to think like God, mm -hmm. being intentional with thoughts, mm -hmm. wrapping difficult situations mm -hmm. in praise. Mm -hmm. Forming gates to, yeah. for heaven to crash through. I feel like I feel like I want to say this because for people listening, who you you know you maybe know Bill from a distance, you maybe even went through the school of ministry, but really didn't have in depth behind the scenes. But you know, people know the books and they know the miracles and they know speaking at conferences, all of it. Like, but the foundation that this man walks on, so. Similar story, like so. He's here with us for the weekend. He does staff time, time with our staff Sunday morning. Then we drive him before he leaves out of town. We drive him over to the new building that we're oh, going to be yeah. moving into. We ask him just to lay hands on I it and pray, and that was yeah. awesome. So we do that, and then he's just he just, he's just we're just chatting, right? He starts talking about he's remembering when back in Reading when he was a young man, and they moved in this new house. For the Salt House Ministry yeah. that they uh -huh. had for, for, the for drug, for addicts, for drug and addicts, addicts and homeless and, homeless and yeah. stuff. He ran as a young man, and he remembered them acquiring this house. It had, it had been a drug house, and they went and prayed over it, and God gave him this house. And this whole thing. So he's just telling us this story. We're, like, reminiscing, and it's like, he's like, eh. And he talked about the first time they went and, like, prayed over the house. Like, these these, like, drug addicts came out and, like, like they got to pray for him and they were like, Oh, you're like you guys are the ones that are supposed to have this house, like kinda oh. like they knew like God had spoke it was I don't want to mess up the details, but he so he's just telling this story, which is awesome. But then later we're in the car, so we're driving him back. So like twenty minutes later, and he looks over and he and he goes, I'm driving, he he goes, he goes, Hey, you know, um, I mentioned the salt house and the thing about the drug addicts. Now I might uh, I don't even remember the exact details, but he's like, oh, you know, actually now I'm thinking about it. I really I don't know if they were drug addicts or if they were drug if they were the drug dealers. I can't remember, and I don't want to give any misinformation. So I just wanted you to know. Wow. And I'm like, the point is, it was such a mundane detail. He it doesn't change sense. the emphasis of the story at all. Yeah. And it's from 40 years ago. Yeah. But. It's so important to him, the detail and the accuracy and the integrity, that 20 minutes later he wanted to revisit just to clean up anywhere yeah. that he might have given a fall. And I'm just sitting in the car going, this man. Yeah. This man is in, like, yeah. like Unlike yes. Unlike anyone else. We know, like, the crazy miracles and we know the cancer-free zone, but yeah. not many people know that yeah. part of Bill. Exactly. And that's the foundation for the rest of it. I'm yeah. like, oh, my goodness. That's when, so when we left Reading, you guys came here, we went to L.A., and it became very apparent there's not another bill. Mm -hmm. There's not another, I've never met a person like that yeah. that will clean up even a tiny detail yeah. that will be so integrous, so honest, yeah. so pure. Like, I just, I've never seen anyone like him. Someone who would go back through... An entire magazine, yeah, just to look at conference speakers and tell his heart is moved with the love of God for each conference speaker. Yeah, like, yeah. So it's what crazy. he gave us, he gave us how to think like God from his history yeah. with God from his history. Yeah, how we can not just carry revival into the world, but also mm. that integrity mm -hmm. that purity mm -hmm. that's yeah. what he released that's what he yeah. gave us and he gave us a father's a father's blessing while he's here you know and uh Man. and just the, the the wind it's like you know i don't know how to put it into words but it's like wings just whoosh, yeah. like go forward yeah. run on you're blessed and you know the covering that he releases that you know the 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 spirit realm the angelic recognize that yeah. and partner in accordance with that. And when, when he releases a blessing, you know, 
There's something on it. The natural realm and the spirit realm <laughs> respond, and so I'm excited to to keep plowing and to pe- keep being faithful. We ha- we have an assignment. Mm-hmm. We, like I, and I have a side. We have an assignment to first protect the call of God, Jesus, what He paid for. Uh, paramount. We yeah. don't we don't worship a yes. man. We worship. Yeah. We worship Jesus, the Father, but also to protect the integrity of the movement. Yeah. The purity and power movement that, that Bill and Bethel has paid a price for. Like that's that's part of what we're doing yeah. here. So, you know, if you're listening to this, if you're part of Bethel Austin, like that's part of the mandate, it's part of the goal, kingdom first transformation, but it's transformation with that that set of values it is uh it's changed us it's changing yeah. the world like it is the nature it is the nature of god manifest through his people so yeah i love it it was a good day <laughs> i wish he could have been here longer oh <laughs> we'll get him back no i want to i just want to jump in this to you earlier when we were talking about the um the camp that i first yeah. saw him at then i a few years later spoke at a few years later, you spoke at that leaders thing. I just want to tell, especially young people that are listening, the 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 power of faithful, faithfully serving. Like find find a father in the spirit, a mother. Find find somewhere that you can faithfully serve. Like everyone wants to be twenty years advanced yeah. now, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, I want to. I want the miracles and I want the conferences and I want to travel and I want it like whatever it is, right? Yeah. We want to be up here. Find somewhere, serve faithfully. Find find someone that someone somewhere that is representing the kingdom well. Connect yourself there and be like, how can I make them look like a genius? Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Them. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I glean? How can I le- learn? And if you will do that, if you will humble yourself like that, God will exalt you in due time. Yeah. It's a process that can't be that can't be overlooked. Um, and uh, and I think is is underappreciated in today's Christianity. But there's Absolutely. there's so much. There's so much to it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's how you receive. Come on. It's getting getting in a position to receive. It's how you receive is how you get positioned. It's how you get launched. Like yeah. I said, and both from man, but from God, too. Yeah. Like, uh, God, will, God yes. will promote you into your promise as you serve someone else's uh, uh, vision, faithfully learn, work out all those kinks, all, all of it. All That's of a it. whole nother topic we can go into but just grab a hold of that truth and let it get in there deep so yeah and i think that is what you're talking about there is really what this whole conversation's been about inheritance Mm -hmm. bill we are we you bethel austin myself personally my family has is has received an inheritance by being under him serving him Serving a father, yep. we received an inheritance, and now yep. we're yep. S- we're standing on the yep. shoulders of giants. We're running with it, and that's what you're talking about: is hey, receive an inheritance, get in position to totally. receive an inheritance because you'll you're, go way beyond. You're what traveling you can do all over the world, bringing revival. Yeah. People pulling on Seth Dahl and you know uh, a, a known speaker and conferences, but it started with you know. Where can I serve? Yeah. How can I make this place better? How can I make you look like a genius? Like, oh, you need yeah. help in children's church? Boom, yeah. here I am. Amen. And that started, and then you became children's pastor, and you grew this amazing thing, and like notoriety grew, but it was out of that place of faithfully serving yeah. and plowing yeah. that you now are like, ah, people are inviting you to Tokyo and everywhere to like, hey, come speak. and. Yeah. But it starts there. So anyway, we got on a big, we're riding a big I rabbit. Know, but I, I was just feeling it, so I, yes. I just needed to say it. But, well, it's yeah. how you got where you are. It's yeah. how I got where I got. Yeah. And it wasn't even like, like, yep, we just want to serve. Yeah. 
We just want to be sons. That's it. We just want to be. That's it. We recognize that man's our father. I know. Mm-hmm. I know he's my father, just like you mm-hmm. did. I may not have had those words come mm-hmm. out, but totally. he's our father. We just want to be sons, and it's yeah. turned into this whole other thing, and that's what we we want for more people. So yeah. you want for more people for the younger generation yeah. to receive some inheritance, to receive that wind, to go way beyond anything. So they can any be launched yeah. even further. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Amen. it was a good time having Bill here. <laughs> Such a good time. I, I know we could just, we could have him here way more often and be just fine. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for being involved in Bethel Austin and, yeah, for being a part of this inheritance that we're running with. Thanks for joining us when Bill was here, if you could, or watching online and just receiving that. We pray that that's what you get is inheritance, mm-hmm. impartation, inheritance, that you, you, you find your place as a child, as a child. Mm-hmm. as, a, as a, a son and daughter of God and of people that he's put on the earth yeah. to, to really give you something that you can never get on your own. And we're just thankful that that's what, that's what we had that weekend with him, and we're thankful that you guys join us on this, and we will see you soon mm-hmm. in another podcast, another Revival yeah. Recap. Um, as always, Facebook, Instagram, And BethelATX.com is where you can keep up with everything that's going on. Come on. We love running with you guys. And we will see you next time. Yep. Goodbye. Goodbye.